What's up guys, Eric here, and I wasn't gonna do a video today, it's Saturday, Hellstrom's out, I'm like, I wanna binge the whole season of that so I can do a season overview for Hellstrom, but I saw an article pop up on Twitter, I clicked on it because I was like, this can't be true, this can't be real, this, this is just not, you know, is, are they trying to be sensational, what's going on here? But I clicked on the article and I read it and I was like, okay, I need to pause. <laughs> need to pause. I need to come make this video because I want to talk about this and get it off my chest because it does bother me just a little bit. Well, a, little, a bit more than a little bit, I guess you could say. Um, so this is about the boys showrunner, Eric Kripke, which by the way, I did my review, my season overview for the boys season two. If you haven't seen it, click over there now and go check that video out. I talked about the whole season and um, how interesting it was. But anyway, so we have this article here from Eric Kripke, the showrunner for the boys. If um, you're not familiar with him, you probably know him from Supernatural, uh, Timeless. He's done a couple other things, Revolution. Um, he's been involved with a few things, and he's a genre creator. Like, he does a lot of these things that are, are like, basically built for franchise-type material. So, anyway, he has this article here. This is from IGN. And um, you can go, Matthew Adler uh, put this article up. It was late last night, my time, 11.28 p.m., yesterday. So that's why I didn't see it last night, but I saw it today. And, uh, man, I'm so, I get so disappointed by stuff like this. I don't like articles like this because I, I feel like we're already dealing with a lot of division and toxicity between fans within the own, within this genre, within this thing we're in. And when we have people involved with the creative process who just continue to put that wedge down, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that. Now in this article, we're going to read through it, uh, here in a moment, just cause I've already read through it once. Uh, there's a bit of fence sitting here that Eric does that I'm not a fan of. I'm totally okay with fence sitting. I'm to okay with being in the middle of the road and, and having, to, you know, getting more information before you make a decision about something. But in this case, it seems like Eric is fully aware of both sides of this, this situation, but yet he, he decides that he wants to sort of stay in the middle of it for part of this statement and then completely like flip it on the other side, but still won't commit to how he feels about Marvel films or superhero, superhero films in general, as we mentioned in this article, I'm just not a fan of this kind of stuff. And this is one of those times where I totally understand that Eric can say whatever he wants to say. I don't believe in, in that kind of censorship whatsoever, but I kind of wish that I didn't have to see this because it changes my opinion of the material that I'm watching. And a lot of times I just want to watch the material. I don't want to be bogged down by things that I, I guess I didn't need to know. So I'm going to preface this by saying, if you love the boys and you don't want to have, you know, the creator's opinions make you feel a certain kind of way, then you probably should turn away now. Uh, because I, I do feel a little weird after reading this. So it says here, it says here, the boys boss is a Marvel fan, but finds the MCU dangerous. The way that pop culture conditions people subtly it's conditioning them the wrong way. And, and immediately when I read that headline, I'm like, please tell me this is being sensational. Please tell me that this is not something that is going to try and paint the genre in a negative way while you're also piggybacking and making money off of the genre at the same time, because that bothers me when anyone does that. It says the boy showrunner Eric Kri Kripke recently revealed that he is a fan of Marvel's movies, but feels they are inherently dangerous to society and how they portray superheroes. He also discussed some of the social commentary surrounding the boys, specifically how it ties into our country's current political climate. Uh, this is, it just gets worse here. During an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Kripke briefly spoke out about the origins of superhero comics, saying that the era they were created in doesn't really apply as cleanly today. And I will say this, comic books have tried, at least in the last maybe 20 years that I can tell, to really update what those classic characters, who they are and what they are. And he's saying here, it doesn't apply as cleanly today. I think that is an accurate statement. 
the the world we're in now is very different from the world that a lot of these characters came from, which is why we're going through sort of this painful reinvention of what superheroes are, of who they are. I don't disagree with that statement at all. He goes on to say he believes there's an undenied, deniable fascist underpinnings to early characters like Superman, whose likeness was an inspiration for the boy's psychotic antagonist, Homelander. Okay. Um, Superman has been used in so many different ways over the years. Everything from being multiversal versions that are evil, where he grew up in a different country and became a completely different character. It is really hard to paint Superman with broad strokes. And I think that's also something that people do a lot. I was even guilty of doing this, of trying to make Superman a very simplified thing. Yes, he is a figure for what a, like a, a template for what a superhero is. And I understand that, but he has become a much more rich and depth filled character over the years. So you might could say like maybe the early version of Superman could be projected that way, but we've already covered what Superman would be if he wasn't Superman. So I don't think that painting that whole character, like as a, like with every version, every take on him with this one concept works for me. And Homelander only works if he is that version of Superman. So Homelander couldn't exist as, as he is if Superman was in fact what Eric is saying that he is. So that's why Homelander works. He goes, when asked about his thoughts on the Marvel and DC movies, he replied, people might be surprised to know this, but I'm actually a fan of the Marvel stuff. The filmmaking is often, often impeccable. I actually really enjoy the humor stone that a lot of them are written in. They're snarky and fast and glib. And I like that style. Could he just have left it there? But no, he goes, however, despite the lighthearted nature of the films, he believes there's a much deeper problem that people are missing. My issue with them is not the movies themselves, which I find that statement to be contradictory, but let's go on. But there are too many of them overall. Now, I will not disagree with the second part of that statement. If you feel there are too many movies, of superheroes, and you just kind of want to see something different, I get it. I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. I understand it. He says, I sort of believe it's dangerous not to overstate or be overdramatic, but, but you are, uh, but it's a little dangerous to train an entire generation to wait for someone strong to come in and save you. Oh man. So on the flip side of that, with your show, the boys, you literally turn all of these characters. Well, most of these characters into murderers and killers and awful people. So you are benefiting from this training of people with superheroes you are benefiting from that thing by peddling a superhero satire that literally turns these characters into everything you're accusing them of being which isn't a problem but don't act like you're not benefiting from it don't act like you're not getting something out of this relationship like you are totally getting something out of this the entire success of the series of the boys has to do with seeing our characters who are beloved and regarded as these great characters that have such rich history and turning them into these, you know, modern evil, you know, real world versions of these characters. The, the boys would not function. It wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for everything that you're saying is a problem here. So you're cashing those checks. I, I find that a bit weird. Um, he goes on to say, and this is kind of where I just was like, oh, he goes, that's I th that's I think how you end up with people like Trump and populists who say I'm only the only one who can come in and it's going to be me. So now he is comparing all of the great superheroes to one of the most controversial people in modern times and one of the most divisive administrations in the United States. All right. He goes, and I think the way that pop culture conditions people subtly, I think it's conditioning the wrong way because there's just too much of it. So I think that it's nice to have a corrective, at least a small one and say in us to say, they're not coming to save you, hold your family together and save yourselves. 
So he is positioning the boys as being this palate cleanser, I guess, for superhero stuff. I'm not going to disagree with everything that he says here. Some of it is absolutely true. Some of it is opinion. But I will say, I don't think the boys could even function as a piece of art if it were not for the other characters existing, because that is the sole reason that the boys exist. That's why they're there. They are there for us, the fans of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, all these other characters to tune in and see, oh, this is a like an alt version of these characters who are absolutely awful. And yes, guess what? Some of them are not coming to save you. And I understand that. But they're good guy characters that exist on the boys. Queen Maeve, Starlight. They're characters within that show who do save people. There are human characters who do save people. So the only thing you've done with the show is you, is you flipped it. So the good guys are bad guys and the people who are not supers are the good guys. But they're still heroes. You're still telling the story of, of characters who end up being heroes. Goes on to say, even if he doesn't believe in the messaging put forward by the MCU and other superheroes movies, he's got no problem satire, satirizing, satirizing, yes, the films. Sorry about that. In fact, one of season two moments was directly inspired by a key moment in Avengers Endgame. The all-female superhero team up during the final clash was one that Kripke found ridiculous and led to the parody of Stormfront and Starlight's Girls Get It Done moment. And I think a lot of people understood that. I, I don't have a problem with that. I think that was that was pretty obvious. That that's what was going on there. When asked about it, Kripke said a lot of it came from our executive producer, Rebecca Sonnenstein, who came in after the weekend in game opening. She was just furious. I saw it too. And I was like, that was the dumbest, most contrived. And she's like, don't get me started. She found it condescending. And I agreed. Okay. Get that. Not going to disagree. I think they're totally, they accomplished what they were doing, what they were trying to do there. Uh, so that just created for us a target, a satir satirical target. There's, I can't say that word today. Something really ridiculous in either superhero celebrity or Hollywood culture would immediately go after it. It's an easy shot, he remarked. Yes. So and that's pretty much, there's more stuff with the link to the Hollywood Reporter article, but I, I, I just, I don't necessarily think that you have to sort of, you don't have to like align beloved superheroes with, what some people perceive as corrupt administrations as evil people. I don't, I, I get the show. Like I understand what the show is doing. I understand what it's trying to, the message is trying to convey. At least I thought I understood what it was trying to convey. If this is what the showrunner is trying to show us is that superhero stuff is evil and we shouldn't be watching it. Then why would I be, why would I watch his show? I just don't totally understand that aspect of it again he's totally allowed to have an opinion i'm not the opinion police i'm not here to tell people what they can and can't say what they can and can't do that's not how i function and i don't believe in any kind of censorship but i don't like the fact that he was saying that those classic comics that we love that literally bred what we have today is it's responsible for atrocious acts and things like that i, I don't I just don't like it. I, I think it's wrong. I think it's painting the fans like us, the people who love this stuff. It's making us seem like there's something wrong with us loving these classic characters and these superheroes. And then he's taking a paycheck from it. Everyone involved with this is taking a paycheck from it. So you find it abhorrent, but you're willing to make money off of it. Take what you will from that. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's just <laughs> You're connected to Amazon. Think about that for a second. Just think about that for a second. All right. Um, I'm going to leave it there, but I just wanted to throw this video up and um, see what you guys think. I'm curious. Are your opinions different from mine? Do you agree with Eric? Do you think he's 100% right and you totally are on board with this? Or do you find it a bit strange, like I do, that this is your take? considering that you're in the genre, the boys, it's not separate from superhero media. It is definitely part of superhero media. 
that is why it is successful. So I think trying to make yourself adjacent to it in a weird way is a little strange to me, but I could be wrong. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Um, if you'd be so kind to hit the like button and uh, show your support, it would be very much appreciated. Again, my season overview for The Boys Season 2 is up and available. It's not getting the kind of uh, attention that a lot of people said it would because they seem very interested in it. So please go over and support that video. Um, it's over in the tab here. and I'll put it up at the end of this video. Uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel and um, become part of the Eric That's pretty much it. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go back and finish watching Hellstrom. Expect a review for that whole season um, on Monday. All right. See you guys later.